It's the Mustang Insider Show. What's up, Cal Poly fans? I'm Chris Sylvester. Welcome to the first Mustang Insider of the 2024 calendar year. Certainly hope you had a great holidays and uh, your new year is off to a great start. Cal Poly women's basketball off to a great start in the Big West. The Mustangs sporting a 3-1 and one conference record through four games, and they've played three of the first four away from Mott Athletic Center. Now, more home games down the stretch should be a good thing for Chanel Styers, the second-year head coach who has quickly turned around the culture and has this team competing for a 2024 Big West Conference title. We're set to be joined by Sierra Lichty, redshirt freshman who's contributed some valuable minutes and valuable buckets early on in the season. But before we get started, as always, we'd like to remind you that award-winning, high-quality, safe medical care that you can trust is just around the corner at French Hospital Medical Center. Proud supporters of Cal Poly Athletics. Learn more at dignityhealth.org forward slash French Hospital. Here's our conversation with the redshirt freshman from Utah, Sierra Lichty. All right, our guest on Mustang Insider this time around, it's Sierra Lichty of Cal Poly Women's Hoops, redshirt frosh from Riverton, Utah. Hey, thanks for taking some time to join us. How much fun has it been to be a part of uh, this team and this program? You guys are off to a three and one start uh, in the Big West. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, it's been it's been a roller coaster the last two years, but it's been so fun. And I think it starts with just the team. It's you can tell we just all have so much care and love for each other. And at the end of the day, winning, losing, and we just we just love the heck out of each other. And it's been a ride and we're excited to keep it rolling. Now, I want to start with your background uh, in basketball. I guess you, you have a sister that plays college yeah. basketball and, and you were a two time state champ, thousand point score in high school. When did you fall in love with the game and who were some of your influence growing up? in basketball, like either, you know, family members or parents or friends that maybe influenced you, or it was maybe athletes on television that influenced you to fall in love with the game. Yeah. Um, my sister obviously is a huge deal on why I play basketball and how much fun, like I've had playing basketball. She's two years older than me and we're so close and I, I love her so much. And we were able to win actually both of uh, our state championships together, which was so fun and obviously so fun for my parents. But probably the biggest reason why I played basketball is because of my dad. I have a super awesome dad. He pushes me every single day and is probably the toughest on me out of anybody in the whole world. And um, I grew up pretty pretty small. And so I would always play on my sister's team. And I was, I was the point guard, but then middle school got to be six foot and it was like, Hey, you know, you can really make a run out of it. And I've always wanted to come out to California and uh, play basketball. And that was my dream was to get my school paid for and live in California. I think I've always been a Cali girl at heart. So it was, that was the biggest driving factor was I wanted to do it for my future. I knew basketball was a, an outlet in order to get my school paid for, be on a team and compete and play at the highest level. And so both my dad and sister were huge factors in why I played, but ultimately my decision to play in college was for myself and for my future. No, that, and that really segues into what I was going to ask next, because uh, we mentioned you're from Riverton, Utah, that that's not far from Salt Lake City. I was going to ask like, how much different uh, this last year and a half, I guess, since you got to campus and slow, how much different has the day to day life been for you compared to uh, what you grew up in about 30 minutes south of Salt Lake City? Yeah, um, honestly, one of the biggest like things that I love about Cal Poly in the city of slow is it's it's so safe and it's so beautiful. And it honestly, it's like a home away from home. I, there's a little bit more sunshine here than there is in Utah, but um, I would say as far as high school goes, I came from a winning culture. I, I know what it's like to be around great coaches. And I think coming here really just alluded to the fact that in order to win, you got to work hard. And uh, Coach Styers has instilled that in me more than any other coach has. And she's the epitome of never, never be satisfied. And um, yeah, I think 
in life though, I've always been super independent, but coming out here, you realize how much you love and appreciate your family. And again, it's been a home away from home. Stars has been like another parent in my life. She cares about us outside of basketball and really makes sure at the end of the day, when we step off, step off the court that we're loved. Coach Johnson always checks in on us, asks how our families are, how our parents are and what they're up to. And so They've been a big support in moving out here and being so far away from home that I can't just fly home during the weekend or drive home. That that's been a big part. And then um, also the girls are are a family of your own. And I don't know, having a smaller team this year has been honestly one of like the best things that we could have had because I think our bonds are so much closer and they be all the girls become your sister and you fight like sisters and you love each other like sisters. And yeah, it, it was an adjustment, but I think in my second year, I've done a lot better with being on my own and kind of just playing ball because it's hard and it's a grind, but it's been fun. Well, you guys have been a ton of fun to watch and we've obviously seen the huge improvement um, that this program has undergone from um, not only just two years ago before Coach Chanel Styers and, and her staff got in, but even going from from last year to this year. And I know your health and other players' health, a big reason why you guys have been able to kind of stay on the floor a little bit more this season. I, I want to talk about your uh, story on how you got to Cal Poly because it's it's a unique recruiting story. Mm -hmm. uh, take us through that process because, you know, Chanel Styers when she first got the job and I kind of asked her about her roster and how it came together she recruited you while she was at cal state east bay and you were ready to go there then mm -hmm. she gets the job down here at cal poly and gets you to flip your commitment like take me through the timeline of the first contact you had with chanel styers your commitment to east bay and then uh, the last minute switch up where instead of going d2 you're going d1 and you're still with styers and you're coming to cal poly yeah um so kind of like you said, my my recruitment was a little unique um, coming out of Utah. Uh, I played for a pretty good like circuit team. Um, I was on the Adidas circuit my sophomore year. It was fun. It was great. I was getting looks and um, COVID obviously um, happened and we didn't get to travel and coming from a smaller, smaller state, smaller town, like it's harder to get opportunities out of state. And um, like I kind of mentioned in the beginning, I, I just wanted to come out and play in California. That was like my dream. That was my goal. I kind of wanted to experience things out of Utah and kind of see what it was like. And I emailed cause you know, when you're recruited, like in the recruitment, you just email and email and email and Hey coach, here's my highlights. Hey coach, like take a look. And you're just pushing for opportunities and, um, coach Dyer's reached back out to me and I was actually up in the Bay Area and I just asked her, hey, can I come by? Like I just wanted to meet with her, talk to her face to face and just be like, hey coach, like I want to play for you. I want to be out here. Like um and so that's what I did. She she really knew nothing about a girl from Riverton, Utah that went to Bingham High School, but I I made sure she knew and she took a chance on me after that day. I met her face to face and I was just like, hey coach, like sh I showed her that I really was six foot because you know, sometimes on the recruiting profiles you could, but um, yeah, and she just showed me her heart, her passion for basketball and East Bay was was really high level. They were really good and that was a big deal for me to be on a team that, that won. And she took her team, I think, to the Elite Eight in Division Two and she kind of laid out like, Hey, this plan of like, we're going to win here and like, we can do it with you and you can be a big part of our team. And it was just, yeah. So that it, it was funny. Cause we kind of hit it off right away. And then after that first day that I met her, she came and watched the games that I could. And she, she took a leap on me and ended up offering me a scholarship. And, um, it really was one of the only opportunities I had because I didn't want to stay in Utah and it was it was a lot because Coach Dyer's like that. I was willing to go out to Cal State East Bay, and she just she has a drive, she has a passion, and anybody who meets her, you can tell it right away. She has this energy about her, and she was excited about me, and I was excited about her. I wanted to win. I wanted to come out to California, and we just we really did hit it off. And um, I committed my 
senior year fall to East Bay and um, didn't played my whole senior season was was lucky enough to play my whole senior senior season and um, I was ready to go filling out my housing applications for East Bay talked to all the girls did all the zooms and um, coach Dyers called me up one day and was just like hey I have some news um, this is this is what's happening and so she told me that she was coming out to Cal Poly and we ended that phone call like oh shoot like what am I gonna do am I gonna stay she's gone. That was the whole reason that I was kind of going to go. And then, um, I kind of spoke with my dad about it and I was like, dad, like, I really think I can go make it work. Like, I know I can play D one. I, I got the size, I got the strength. Like I know, like I can compete at that level. And about a week later I called coach back and I was just like, Hey coach, is there any opportunity for me to come play for you? Is there any, any way that I can come play for you? And, um, Basically, one thing after another, she told me there was no more scholarships. She had everybody back on the team and um, that if I wanted to come, I was going to have to walk on and work for it. And so it was a huge decision because obviously the biggest deal is you play college basketball to to get a scholarship or to get your school paid for. But I knew the belief that I had in Coach Dyers and I knew that Cal Poly was a great school, both academically location wise and it's beautiful and every kid wants to play d1 and I knew from the bottom of my heart like I I wanted to compete and I wanted to play ball so um called her back and I was like coach like I'm gonna come I'm gonna come make it work I'm gonna come earn it I'm gonna show you that I deserve it and so all last year it was it was it was a really tough year and I think anybody you talk to it, it was it was a tough year through and through and she she made us tough. She really did. And I'm probably the toughest I'm going to be in my whole life and doing all the things because of her. And she will squeeze the most out of you. And those first eight games that I played in before my stress fracture, I proved to her that I could compete and I could play at this level. And, um, at the end of last year, she gave me a scholarship. And so I'm here now and we're, we're rolling. We're having a lot of fun. And I'm so glad that I'm here and I have this opportunity and Cal Poly is beautiful. And I'm so grateful for coach Dyers and that she took the opportunity on me and she had enough belief in me to let me come and have this opportunity. So yeah, that's kind of my story in a nutshell, but super grateful for the girls, super grateful for coach Dyers, coach Samba, Nelms, and all the people who've been here since day one, Annika Shaw, Cindy Borland, Natalia Ackerman, those are my girls and I, I'm so grateful and blessed for this opportunity. And yeah. Uh, it's a terrific story. And more times than not, we've, we've heard about, you know, student athletes maybe having to come pay their way for a year and kind of bet on themselves, so to speak. Yeah. Right? I'm sure. That's a term you kind of threw around last year For sure. was, you know, Hey, I, I, like you said, I can play at this level. And unfortunately uh, your season got cut short due to injury in late December last year, but in that small eight game window, you were able to prove that. And and now being on scholarship, that's just such a a spectacular story for a a lot of other student athletes that might find themselves in that predicament, maybe not having a scholarship year one or year two, but knowing that it's a possibility if you put in the work and and create those relationships that it could happen. Not to mention uh, the fact that you were emailing coaches and reaching out. I mean, that that is good people skills that will will get you by for the next like 30 years. Forget just, just basketball, but like that's how the real world works. So so the fact that you were able to execute that at such a young age, I mean, that, that's I, I really appreciate you sharing that story. We we don't usually get the the hard hitting feel good stories like that on on the Mustang Insider podcast, but uh, let, let's talk about last year because you mentioned the eight games and then you come back from the Christmas break and and you you suffer that stress fracture during a practice. What was the toughest part about going through that? And and what was the rehab process uh, like getting back to where you're at now? Yeah, so uh, I think everything happens for a reason. At the time, I didn't think so. We had gone through a a pretty tough summer and a a pretty grueling fall. She, she made it like, Hey, if you're going to stay here, then you got to prove that you can stay here. And so I did all the, all the hard stuff, all the preseason 
running tests, conditioning lifts. And, um, I played my best game, Northern Arizona, uh, my best game all year, 13 points. We ended up losing by, I think, two in overtime. But played my best game, was kind of on that uphill. And uh, coming back from Christmas break and then eventually breaking my foot, I was super upset. Um, I honestly had no words. That first week, I I called my dad and I was like, I came here. Like, I bet on myself and I can't believe, like, this just happened. And obviously, that first initial, like, oh, my gosh, why is this happening to me? I did it all. I, like, I did all the hard work just for, like, what? To get hurt? But um, as time went on, as, like, I matured, I think I really realized like everything truly does happen for a reason. And I was able to like step back and really be grateful and thankful for the opportunity that I had for living in slow to live in California, to play on a great basketball team and um, go to school and just realize like all the blessings that I had. And um, it honestly put me in a great spot for the rest of the years with my eligibility, I can keep playing basketball for longer. I'm I'm a year smarter. I've been through the been through the process and um I just had to be patient and rehab was was not horrible. It was fine. Obviously, when you see like your teammates playing, you want to be out there, but it also made me more we over me, wanted to be about the team, just wanted to be out there with my girls, just wanted to win and I think that gave me a lot of insight and maturity for this year to help all of our nine newcomers really just settle in and be like, Hey, we got this. We're good. Like, let's keep going. And it it just honestly gave me more opportunities and everything happens for a reason. And it was a reason to count my blessings. So yeah. Sierra Lichty is our guest here on Mustang Insider, Cal Poly women's basketball, three and one in the big West. Finally back home this Thursday, 6 p.m. Oh. UC Riverside. There haven't been a ton of home games for you guys, and uh, you guys have always played well here. You in particular this season, some of your best games have been inside Mott Athletic Center. So I know that that you're looking forward to to waking up in your own bed and getting getting out and uh, playing a ball game here on uh, Thursday. But it feels like the sky is the limit for this team. I mean, I know you guys came up uh, a point short in overtime at Santa Barbara. And, and that was a frustrating setback over the weekend. But uh, I mean, th- this group has to believe that um, it, it's in the realm to to win a conference championship and go to the NCAA tournament at the end of this thing. Right. For sure. And I think uh, that definitely starts in our locker room. We, we got to be the most connected team. We got to be the most selfish team, unselfish team. Wow. And we got to play the hardest. So I think that's going to, that's going to put us above the top teams in our conference as being the most unselfish and and playing the hardest night in, night out. And that's what's going to get us there. Now, we saw glimpses of uh, the ability to beat anybody, even last year in the Big West. And you guys are obviously that much better, more depth. You're healthy. That certainly helps as well. Before we get into our last little segment here, I'm going to go over some rapid fire questions and then send you on your way. Perfect. Give me- Give me some keys to to beating this UC Riverside team. Uh, they've got some upperclassmen that you guys saw a couple times last year. What have you seen on film from from the Highlanders team that's coming to town on Thursday night? Because we all remember that game a year ago as uh, the Umu Torre buzzer beater game on MLK. Yep. Yeah. Um, a big key for this game is just KYP. We got to know our personnel. We got to lock in on defense. I think um, that's shown throughout our conference as we – we keep teams under how many points they usually score. And that's a big, a big key. And um, another thing that we've been working on a lot this week is our offensive execution. We got to get, share the ball, more assists. And at the end of the day, we got to shut down their, their rebounding number one, super athletic. She was a huge part in the game last year and she's, she's a big key. Um, Sydney Borland's lockup defender night in, night out. So big know your personnel and we gotta we gotta score the ball at a little higher clip than we're scoring right now but other than that we gotta play harder and for longer and have more fun so you know I I forget that that's the UC Riverside team that actually ended your guys season last year in the in the Big West tournament after you guys had what beat them twice in the regular season last year 
here and down there. Tough to beat any team three times in a year, let alone yep. you know, a team in the Big West. So certainly looking forward to that. That'll be 6 p.m. Thursday, finally back inside Mott Athletic Center. Ooh. And the good, good thing about having so many road games early in the schedule is you'll have a bunch of home games late and you could be playing for a conference championship and obviously a uh, home court advantage as we see in college basketball goes a long, long way. All right, rapid fire. Let's try this. I'm going to hit okay. you with five quick questions. You're okay. going to hit me back with five quick answers, okay? Deal. All right, let's go. Favorite place to grab food in slow or on the Central Coast? Pismo, Tascadero, Paso, whatever. Um, I'm a big Finney's girl or Petra, if you want something fresh. Yes, Petra. I, lo- I love the chicken shawarma and the mm-hmm. all the hummus and the tzatziki, all that stuff. Good, good yes. answers there. If you were to have one of these players as a teammate, who? Asia Wilson or Caitlin Clark? Hmm. Asia Wilson. She's a dog. She okay. can play on both ends of the floor, and yeah, she's a dog. She, she's a pro right now. Uh, best memory of 2023? Um, honestly, I'd just say the new team. It's great. They, I love the girls, every single one of them. We love each other. Definitely the team. Okay, Utah question. Favorite snow activity? Ooh, that's do you a good dislike one. or do you dislike the I, snow? That's why you're no, in California. No, I love the snow. I love the snow when it's snowing, but when it's cold and it doesn't snow, then there's like no point to the cold. But I would say sledding. Okay. Sledding is so fun. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna ask you a, a skiing or snowboarding question, but I, I don't know if you do either of those snowboard, things. Snowboard, but it's hard during basketball season because you don't it, want to exactly. but snowboard for uh, sure. And, and the last thing for you, you're doing well with this. Favorite basketball movie. Love and basketball. Love and basketball. <laughs> Not a Space Jam fan. We'll we'll take it. Uh, <laughs> that is Sierra Lichty, redshirt freshman, Riverton, Utah. You can catch the Mustangs back inside the friendly confines of Mod Athletic Center, looking to serve up a little revenge this Thursday night against UC Riverside at six o'clock. Hey, thanks so much for taking some time and, and sharing your stories, and uh, look forward to another conversation soon. Good luck this week. Thank you. Have a good one. This has been the Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.